Before I start the show, 45 RPM Vintage offers a retro vintage style collection of curated limited edition t-shirts featuring iconic designs from the board sports and music of the 1970s to the 90s. The Palmer and Jamie Lynn t-shirts are instant classics and the whole project was born from Joel Gomez's obsession with cool t-shirts, music, and board sports. Check them out at 45rpmvintage.com. The F and Red Snowboard Podcast is presented by Skyview Campers, Never Summer's innovative take on the tiny home. Designed and built in beautiful Colorado, check out skyviewcampers.com. Wired Snowboards builds quality snowboards by hand, 10 minutes away from my house. Visit wiredsnowboards.com and order one today. Fixed bindings are easy to adjust, long lasting, high performance bindings built to have less impact on the environment. Check out fixbindingco.com. Rip Curl Outerwear, strength, durability, and performance. Designed to search further in the snow, head to ripcurl.com and check out the anti series jacket. I can't wait to rock this thing. New Greens, 100% organic, vibrant green juice. Buy yourself some at newgreens.com and use code F and RAD at checkout for 20% off. The Boardroom Snowboard Shop, best selection, best prices. Vancouver's premier snowboard shop. The Boardroom ships to anywhere in North America. So go to boardroomshop.com or visit their stores in Vancouver and North Van. Support also comes from Mount Seymour, Grouse Mountain, Cypress Mountain, the Pro Standard GoPro Accessories, and our friends at 1910. You can use code FNRAD at checkout for 20% off at 1910.com. The Havens is a center for transformational learning located on beautiful Gabriola Island. Plan a visit at haven.ca and use code FNRAD at checkout to save 10% off their Come Alive program. Joel Gomez is one of the most important innovators in snowboarding's outerwear history. Brought into the snowboarding fold by his good friend Steve Cavallaro somewhere around 1980, Joel went on to open the very first snowboard shop in the United States, Sessions. Yes, that same Sessions that created the outerwear line. While we don't get into the deep story of Joel's life in snowboarding, a full episode of Rad is coming for sure. We start out by chatting about the very first time Joel met his longtime friend, Jamie Lynn. My, this is what I recall, and I don't remember the year, to be honest. Um, gosh, if it was the year, if I'm, I'm only guessing, 1990, 89. Um, so it was summertime. I was with Kidwell, and we were at Bachelor, June, July, I don't remember. And we were on the lift line, and Kidwell pointed him out. He goes, check out this kid. He's really good. You know, And that was the first time. I didn't even know his name. I just, check out the kid. He's really good. And... Um, uh, he was in front of us, so somehow we caught up with him, and I was just, you know, just watching him shred. And, and as I recall throughout the day, um, I was watching him a couple more times, and I just went up to him, and I go, hey, you know, would love to sponsor you, and this is what I'm doing, this, you know, sessions, blah, 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 blah. And I think at that time he was riding for Wave Rate, but I, I don't know if it was a flow or what it was. These are the early days. Yeah. Um, I'm <laughs> You know, you, you, this starts to bring back memories. I'm just like thinking about it. Um, and, you know, and then we got a phone numbers and would call him up and he thought about it and he goes, yeah, you know, I'd like to ride for sessions. And, and that's kind of, that was the very spark. And shortly after that, he kind of became friends also with, with uh, Tucker and Wooly at, at, at Volcom. And they also had made him an offer, I think, at that time. But I was fortunate that he chose Sessions in the, in the early years. And, That's sick, yeah. You know. Yeah, because he told the story on the show of crashing at Rankwood's place when he was like a teenager, young kid. And the, the stickers they stole from Rankwood were Session <laughs> stickers. They stole yeah. a stack. They were like, wow, these are worth like five bucks each. Like, we just got $200 worth of stickers right, right there. I didn't hear, I never heard this. Yeah, I'm stoked so to hear he, the story. Yeah, so he... If he was thinking about it, I bet he was not. I yeah, think he was like, yeah. "Holy fuck, I will go on sessions yeah. for sure, for sure." No, it was, yeah, it was fucking rad. What and and so like being from Vancouver, Murray Fraser. When I yeah, uh, started at, at the boardroom, sessions was our main brand, and J Murray was bringing it up from 
you directly. Right. Like there was no Canadian distributor. Right. There wasn't a rep. There was, he must have just met you at a show. Exactly. And that Outer Limits jacket, by the way, yeah, was just, there was nothing that good that year from Burton, from Sam. There was no better snowboard jacket than the Sessions well, Outer Limits. Thank you for the kind words. Yeah. No, it was um, well designed and the, it was awesome. When I first started making outerwear, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know where to get it made. And fortunately for me, being being I was out of Santa Cruz and Berkeley, where North Face was based out of, Berkeley, Oakland, there was a factory there. So I was getting my stuff made by the same factory that was making North Face Amazing. back in the day. I didn't know fabric, so I just kind of like, what are they using, you know? And obviously, North Face at that time was using some of the best fabrics, and I think it was called Ultrix was the very first one. It was pricey. I didn't know anything about pricing, negotiating, but you know, right in Tahoe, our snow is very wet and, yep. uh, and same, you know, with the Northwest. So we, we made stuff to keep you dry because we were out there riding. I remember the Altrex hang tags. Yep. Like that was like a part of what made the things seem so incredible. They yep. had these amazing hang hang tags. Jamie Lynn art by the time he's got Later his on, yeah. Jamie like, Lynn did the, his own art for the hang tags. So and, cool. And him and Rankwit were very instrumental at, at in working with Andy to making sure like if if it's raining, that the water drips the right way, with the way the zipper should be, um, getting Gore-Tex. You know, they, they definitely pushed the technical side. Yeah, of, you were obviously listening to your riders. 100%. And then you got McConkey on there, too. Like, you yeah. crossed over to, to ski at some point. And we were a snowboard shop that wouldn't touch skiing. And we, uh, I was, like, a purist. Yeah. But the, I McConkey, was a purist, too. But the in, McConkey jacket was sick, dude. I was I'm, a purist, too. Lie. But yeah. you see that... For us, riding in Tahoe, like riding in one squaw allowed snowboards, yeah. half the people I rode with were skiers. Right, right. You know, JT Holmes and other, and other guys that were just shredding. I mean, Tom Burt and Jim Zellers were the first guys that could ride the steeps that I knew, Yeah, you know, properly. Totally. And then the other people were the skiers. So yeah. the interaction yeah. between skiing and snowboarding in Tahoe, it kind of got to, they got along a lot better than in, than other places throughout the world and throughout the country. Right, where everything's like green runs and you guys are spraying each other and there's hate. Right, when you knuckle see dragger, it. Yeah, you know. exactly. <laughs> well, I've never understood what knuckle dragger even means. It's just that your hands you're, are low? Like, you know, when you first started somewhere in the early days, you're just, yeah, <laughs> you're, you know, you're pretty low. You're <laughs> but when, your knuckles. And, and right from the beginning, you're absolutely right. When you see a skier lace a line, mm -hmm. like some of the shit that I would watch when I was a kid was like, into the snow zone and like rap films and and you would watch the skiing and glenn plake and scott schmidt who i just <laughs> you'd think i'm a ski lover but you could totally see their style of riding was what we wanted to do and then you see tom burt and, and jim zellers and bonnie leary do it and you'd be like yeah these guys 100 percent. and damien yeah. and the crew that you ran with yeah is we're talking about the absolute legends of an era like the defining people of an entire era from kidwell yeah damien and everybody in between it's like there, yeah. the, there's that was the high water mark for freestyle for like free riding like it's nuts it, well, you know, you look back, in fact, there's a kid here that, that I taught how to snowboard. I, um, Mike Chantry was the first snowboard instructor here in Tahoe. I was the second one because he got me the job. And a kid named John John Lung that I haven't seen in a lifetime. And he goes, Joel? <laughs> and I taught him how to snowboard in 1983 at Soda Springs. You know, <sighs> going back to, you know, that the era here with, you know, I can remember the first time seeing Sean Palmer and, um, and, and, and Damian Sanders. And they were small. Kids. Yeah, they were younger and they were yeah. small, but I just remember like, damn, those little kids are good. And, you know, Palmer has told me the story about Tom not letting him go to the bank slum, not paying for him to go to the bank slum in 86, the second one. And he said, I went straight to Joel. I got a board. I spray painted it black, drove up there, won the fucking contest. Tom was like, <laughs> sorry, you're still a year back. You know, like, I'll yeah. never do that again. Yeah. And what a legendary time to be a part of this stuff plus on top of it you're joel fucking gomez you've got sessions which is punk rock like people would talk about bass was saying he would go down to the warehouse and just be going through tapes all day he's like i fuck this snowboarding is on the back burner compared to how important music is yeah, to some people it's, right it's, so. it's a blessing well, you know i have a new company called 45 rpm vintage and basically for those of you who don't know 45 rpm is a seven inch vinyl record yep for you know 
the faster exactly revolutions record. per minute yeah and um that was my first love as a kid is is, is buying vinyl records and that 45s were, were affordable and those were the hits and uh you know just full circle of i started with vinyl skateboarding surfing and then snowboarding and then you know coming back and, and putting these shirts out is, is i remember fun. being in my local grocery store flipping through a guitar magazine seeing a sessions ad with Kevin Sansalone and yep. telling him and him losing his shit. <laughs> him being like, I'm in Guitar Magazine? What are you talking about? Like, yeah. it was, you crossed genres, right? With that, That's, with that whole thing. That was thing. the way I thought. Yeah. My thinking yeah. was completely, you know. I could still think of that. Love that guy, by the way. Kevin Sansalone? Oh, ah. yeah. Yeah, can't say enough. So stoked I got Kevin. him on Santa Cruz. Because I, I was also the Santa Cruz team manager right. the first three years. Right, And I got Sean Kearns. Sean Kearns actually was the one that turned me on to Kevin Sansalone. How hard, how hard was it to be Sean Kearns' team manager? Well, at that time, it really wasn't. I mean, in, the er, in the early years, I, you know, I just did it for the first three years. And then Sessions kind of blew up and I couldn't do it anymore. Yep. I yep. had so much going on. I had a mail order, a punk rock mail order business going. Right. Outerwear was starting to take off. Yep. Um, so I had to, you know, pass... You had a lot top. of irons but, in the fire. You but just, but to yeah. start it out, you know, I I, I had Cardiel, oh, Rankwit, and Roach were, I think, the first three guys. And then it was Sean Kearns and Sansalone and, and I might be drawing a blank on some other writers. But those are the early, early team. Yeah. And, the, and then European had their own guys. And they would always Bertrand get mad at me. and Camille and all those guys. Right, yeah. right. They, oh, you know who else I got? Victoria. Victoria Jalous was on Santa Cruz. On Santa Cruz for, for just barely one year. And yeah. then Burton kind of grabbed Free her. Burton. Yeah. But I, yeah. I met her at Craig's camp. And, you know, she was shredding ripping yeah, yeah yeah and that's when i made her an offer i go hey do you want to write for santa cruz you know that's incredible i that's, forgot about that yeah see no, nobody would know that i mean except for her and a few people yeah. that would have saw that that's incredible what a team and the, i mean cardiel on a snowboard oh oh the little footage that's so out there good. it's insane so good so skatey you know and he was the first guy to to actually say out loud like okay look here's the reason skateboarding is better than snowboarding for me personally is that i don't want to go to fucking france and stay in hotels that's not what i'm about right i'm about riding the streets with my buddies and kicking ass and having fun skating high level wherever we go right i don't want any i don't need a brunch i don't need a <laughs> mimosa what even is that you yeah. know what i mean and these snowboard guys were a little bit more on the tip of like, hey, we're getting it. We're world traveling, you know, breaking shit in the hotel room. We all walk our oh, own wow. path, you know. Totally. Card, cards, you know, very well respected and loved in the skateboard industry. Yeah. And snowboard industry. And snowboard industry by he's, those, those yeah. that know, you know. He's some, he's some people's favorite snowboarder yeah. that I really respect. And I'm like, yeah, he was, he, he was yeah. a ball I actually had a, you know, I had a Cardiel signature pant. Yeah, I dope. totally forgot about that. Wow, just, really? You know, I, yeah, I don't yeah. even know about I'm that. I'm not sure why we didn't do a jacket, you know? you know. Yeah, sometimes you just do the things you do. Yeah, yeah. there was no rules back then, so None. you're kind of just learning as you go along every month, every every year, you know? It was yeah, just, that early Santa Cruz stuff, like in those ads and everything, just so dope, dude. Yeah, you know, one story that, that stands out is getting a call from Japan and, and I can't remember who it was. I think it was Ranquit or Roach, you know, like, no, you call him, no, you call him. Cause they got kicked out of, they got kicked out and my the Japanese, incident. the yeah. Santa Cruz Japanese distributor was pissed off, you know, and everybody's, you know, I'm, I'm in charge of the team riders, but right. I turned it around and made an ad out of it. And, you know, yeah, yeah, that it was, was it. It's just one of those things. It's legendary. It's legendary. Yeah, Great looking back. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time you know, it was maybe a little scary. At that sure. time it was just like, okay, you guys. <laughs> Yeah, dyed green hair and just chaos, yeah. and, and it was Palmer. I think that was really in. He was the one that. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's so fun. Yeah. So you came up for Slam City Jam when I was working at the boardroom. You couldn't have been a nicer guy, Thank and you. and it was like I felt like a celebrity because I think I don't know if you came up with him or if he was just friends of yours. But Tommy Guerrero's brother, Tony, Tony Guerrero, yeah. came up for Slam City Jam, maybe for a band thing or right. something. I and don't remember. It was so long ago, but I, I always loved that contest. And I think one year we helped, part, you know, kind of sponsor it. Yeah. Gave some money. Yeah. Um, you know, and it was just it was just a great time. Love Vancouver. And it was, it a, good was a time. big community yeah. building thing. And that's what you were building with Sessions. That was as clear as day. An outerwear company that was not 
didn't have roots in skiing, didn't have ties to any right like old shit that was just us was just like it was, n- it was now it you was know. now it, it was, was now it was it was, yeah. it was spread pretty thin you know between the mail order business doing punk rock shirts and selling doc martens and skateboard i mean i still have those catalogs you have snowboards depending on the time of the year yep you know with punk rock shirts and doc martens and then in the summer it'd be skateboards and you know and punk rock t-shirts and it's incredible and yeah you're the t-shirt of the guy flipping with the vans high yep. tops that's i mean that is the defining picture the punk stage rock, dive, yeah. The stage dive. He's yeah. upside down. He's fully committed. He's not scared. Yeah. The crowd's not moving out of the way. It's like, right. That's punk rock. I think that's that was it. a wasted youth shot. With a sh- wasted youth band. Is that what? Um, yeah. yeah. Did you go see? Okay, so you've seen some insane music. You've seen small venue, big band. Yeah. You've I've been s- very fortunate. Yeah. Let's just say. Do you have one that stands out as one I of your favorites? I have a favorites? couple. Um, I got to see the Foo Fighters in a very small, I think, capacity. I want to say 150 to they stuffed 200 people in a bar yep and half the songs were cover wow so there's you know there's dave Grohl playing acdc then he's <laughs> thin lizzy then you know wow you know van halen i mean it's, it's like a party and, and yeah you know for those of you you know who know or don't, don't know dave um dave Grohl from the foo fighters he's just fun you know right. it's just like he's like yeah i won the lottery ticket and i'm having fun with it and sick you know, yeah i mean he's a good guy drummer for nirvana frontman yeah. for foo fighters uh, famously dated tina yep. and was a part of the scene he snowboarded right a little bit you know not at a level that yeah. you know he, he he was a rock star already yeah. so he was yeah that's so sick. that's the one that stands out that's a great one that's yeah. amazing snowboard stuff that you've seen that stands out you ever st- well i remember going to um the the big air in austria in 90 i don't know i'm, I'm gonna guess like 97 98 sure like the it big was, air and style exactly big yeah. air and style it was right after ispo and i remember going there with jamie i think jamie got third on that one but i remember we went we tried to there was like an after party <laughs> and i think it was it was like the group like daniel frank terry jamie and jamie and i'm not sure who else but Moments like that are so classic, and I remember, you know, I remember little snapshots of hanging out with them and just that's the, as the big as it can evenings, get. You know, yeah. of, of that crew. That's as big as it um, can get. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of and there's stuff like that in skateboarding too that I that I've been very fortunate of. You know, with of course, so and so and there's a lot of crossover with with California. Yep, and I, Caballero being close to Sessions, you know, he, yeah. he was one of my first skaters that I sponsored through Session Skateboard Shop. Um, you know, traveling with him, coming up with him actually a lot to Tahoe in the early days in the, in the mid eighties. Oh yeah. Cause he was crushing it for snowboarding. Yeah, like he yeah. was on the cover of the first snowboarder zine on, uh, on Alani Toft. I think. First snowboarder magazine. Mag. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. snowboarder mag. The one there's no, it's there not was a one through that was line. Called snowboarder. That's it. Was it. High it was, quality. I think, the, I yeah. think, um, only 10,000 copies were made. Only 10,000. Yep. When you saw, think about distribution of snowboard mags now, like yeah. only 10,000, like, wow, yeah. that's a fucking shit ton now. Yeah, and it's but, quality paper. You know, I still have it. So that was Oh, that's great. One. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, oh, man, I've reached out to the team manager at Vans and I said, you need to give Cab a boot. You need, you need to do a classic cab full cab style boot because he's the he's the founding member for many of us seeing him do it legitimized it that was like fucking cavalero cover of the first snowboard magazine ever in the world in the world right yeah like on the sims brochure in 1985 i think also the cover you know so yeah so it's like he's got a deep history in snowboarding for the beginning uh, and they already have the shoe. It's like just do the thing. Do a limited run. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. A great, that's a great idea. That's a great I know. Suggestion. I'm gonna send this. You saying yeah. that because you got got some clout in the no, industry. No, it, it, it makes sense. <laughs> you just do you know yeah. a, a limited run and and it would get it would give me an excuse to get Caballero on here too. <laughs> yeah. No, Stevie's a good. He's a great human being and legend. Yeah. Yeah. And fortunate yeah. to, you know, spend time with him and on him all. The, throughout our whole lives you know from seeing him skate at winchester skate park as a little little kid he was a tiny kid yeah 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 yeah. that's amazing well joel i'll let you get to your family thank you thank you for your time and thank you for all the stuff you've done for snowboarding over the years and uh it's great to have you on the show thank you very much it's a privilege and 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 i like 
you make me think of the old stuff because we forget about it. We don't discuss it. And then right. you start to remember stuff. We'll do a long episode Sounds good. when I come down to California. All right, man. Right on. Later. F and Rad shout outs this week to Joel Gomez. Thanks for all the years of sessions and Santa Cruz and Sims and everything you've done in the snowboard community. I can't wait to have you back on the show for a full episode. These bonus episodes have been so much fun to do, and I've got a bunch more coming from Holy Bully to follow these Legends of Tahoe ones. Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. You guys are the reason I can do the show. If you're thinking about joining but don't know how, just go to our Instagram and follow the link in our bio. Please come back next week for more F and Rad snowboarding presented by Skyview Campers and brought to you by F and Rad Productions.